Hi, this is Mr. Goma. In this video, we're going to answer the question, how does soap work? Well, before we talk specifically about soap, let's talk about oil and water. Because what we'll learn about is why is soap so good about cleaning oil off things? So if I pour some oil and water, we'll see that they actually don't mix. Oil and water don't mix. The oil floats to the top and the water stays on the bottom. So why don't they mix? Well, it has to do with the molecular structure of both oil and water. So let's take a look at those. So water, as you may remember, has a polar structure. The oxygen in water is more electronegative than the hydrogen, so it pulls the electrons in the shared covalent bond towards itself. So we have two polar bonds in water, and because these polar bonds are not exact opposites, they don't cancel out. We're gonna get a polar molecule. Well, what about oil? If we look at the structure for an oil, like mineral oil here, we'll see that all bonds we have are either carbon-carbon bonds or carbon-hydrogen bonds. And both these bonds are nonpolar. Carbon and hydrogen have very similar electronegativity values. And if we only have nonpolar bonds, then what we're gonna end up with is a nonpolar molecule. So this explains why oil and water don't mix, because in order to mix, there would have to be some attraction between the oil and water. And there's no attraction here. There's no intermolecular forces that will occur between the oil and the water. Because look, the hydrogens on the water have a partial positive charge, the oxygen has a partial negative. But there's no partial charges on the oil. So there's no place where we could get opposite charges on different molecules. You'll see water's partial positive has no negative to attract to. And oxygen's partial negative has no partial positive to attract to. So no attraction, no mixing. So we can summarize this here in an important principle about what dissolves in what. And that principle is like dissolves like. So here we go. So polar substances, like our water molecules, can dissolve polar chemicals in them, like sugar. Sugar is a substance that's polar and it dissolves very easily in water. But polar substances, like water again, cannot dissolve nonpolar chemicals like oil. So if we want to dissolve something like oil, then we can't just use water. So that's where soap comes in. Soap is special because soap can dissolve both polar and nonpolar compounds. And why is that? That's because soap molecules have both polar and nonpolar parts. So let's take a look at a common soap molecule to see. The soap molecule that we're gonna look at here is a soap molecule called sodium lauryl sulfate. We'll talk about this name in just a second, but let's take a look at it. So on the one part of the molecule, this is called the tail end, we only have carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. So these are all nonpolar bonds, just like in our mineral oil. In our mineral oil, we also just had nonpolar bonds as well. So this is the nonpolar part of soap. On the other hand, we also have a polar part of soap. See all these oxygens over here? These oxygens are extremely electronegative. They're gonna pull electrons towards themselves and this part of the soap is going to have a negative charge. And notice there's also a negative charge here as well. Okay, so we've got a nonpolar part made up by all these nonpolar bonds and a polar part of soap because we have these extremely electronegative atoms of oxygen on this end over here. So what we have is we've got a polar head, and this area is called the head, and a nonpolar tail. So the polar head of the soap molecule is able to form hydrogen bonds with H2O. Look at this. All these negative charged oxygens and this negative there is able to form a hydrogen bond with water. Remember, water's hydrogens have partial positives. And then look over here. Remember, if we have a nonpolar molecule or a large nonpolar portion of a molecule, we'll be able to have London dispersion forces. And we can get London dispersion forces between this part of the soap and mineral oil. 
if you were to look at this here, you'll see the mineral oil has a very similar structure and they can both engage in London dispersion force, LDF bonding here. So I mentioned that so sodium lauryl sulfate is extremely common. So you might be asking yourself, where does this name come from? Well, you notice that we've got a negative ion here so we need a positive sodium to balance out the charge. So that's the sodium. The laurel has to do with the name of this carbon chain here. And sulfate, as you remember, is SO4. It's a polyatomic ion. And you'll notice we have sulfur and one, two, three, four oxygens. So sodium laurel sulfate. I bet if you were to look at the ingredients list for the soap in your kitchen or in your bathroom or even your shampoo, you would see sodium laurel sulfate as one of the top ingredients. Okay, so what's gonna go on here? Well, we have the polar head here, and that's gonna bond with H2O, hydrogen bond with H2O, and we have a nonpolar tail, and that's the part that is gonna engage in London dispersion force bonding with the oil. Now, for the rest of this video, instead of using this Lewis dot diagram, I'm gonna use a simplified version of this. So I'm going to still represent the polar head and the nonpolar tail. But instead of using this Lewis dot diagram, what I'm going to use is this here. All right. So just to simplify, the nonpolar tail will be a straight line. This is all our carbon hydrogen portion. And the polar head will be like this hand because it wants to go out and grab a water molecule. Okay. So how is soap going to clean and how is it going to make bonds with both oil and water. Well, let's take a look. Here's what's going to happen. Our soap molecules are going to essentially form a ball around the oil. So if we have a, stri uh, a long string here of carbon hydrogen molecules, like in mineral oil, the soap will form LDF attractions with its nonpolar parts. So the oil is going to be nonpolar and the tail of the soap is nonpolar and we're gonna make LDF attractions here. So the oil and the soap will get attracted together. All right, so the soap molecules are gonna make this ball. Now, what about the water? Well, on the outside of the water, or excuse me, on the outside of the soap ball that comes around the oil, these polar parts are gonna make hydrogen bond attractions with the waters. So we're gonna get lots of water molecules that are attracted to the outside of the soap. So we're essentially gonna make a big ball. Uh, and again, you can imagine water, more water molecules all around, right? And this ball here actually has a special name. It's called a mesel. And that's the name of uh, a, this ball, which is formed of the soap molecules with the waters on the outside and the oil on the inside. Okay, so let's summarize. What's gonna happen here? So how does soap work? Well, number one is that soap acts like a link to connect the polar water molecules with the nonpolar oil molecules. And why does it act so well as a link? Because soap has polar and nonpolar ends. So the polar ends can bond to water, you know, at least they can form intramolecular force attractions with water, and the nonpolar ends form an attraction with the oils. And once linked via the soap, the water molecules can wash away the oils. So you can imagine you've got a faucet kind of like this, and then the water coming out of the faucet is able now to wash away these soap balls. So hopefully now you can explain why soap is so effective at washing away oil. Now let's go back and take a look at our, uh, our um, our soap and, or excuse me, our oil and water mixture here. So we said if we added soap, that would be effective. Here's some soap actually right here in this one. And if I add some soap, I should be able to stir this up and I should be able to break some of this oil here. If you can do that, you can see that the oil is no longer just on the top. I've got one over here and you can see that the oil here is now more or less evenly dispersed over throughout the entire container. So the soap that we've added has able to make the water and the oil mix much better. Thank you.